of the PBS series Nova Science Now. Frequent guest on programs like The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. With half a million Twitter followers, you have become Outer Space's most ardent and best known advocate here on planet Earth. A product of the Bronx High School of Science, you did your undergraduate degree in physics at Harvard, your PhD in astrophysics at Columbia, and a postdoc at Princeton. You are the co-founder and chair of the Department of Astrophysics at the American Museum of Natural History, of which the Hayden Planetarium is a part. You have taught at Princeton and at Columbia and as writer in residence for the Department of English at Yeshiva University. Your research interests include star formation, exploding stars, dwarf galaxies, and the structure of the Milky Way. Your data comes from the Hubble Space Telescope and from telescopes in California, New Mexico, Arizona, and the Andes Mountains of Chile. In addition to your dozens of academic and professional publications, you write and speak and show the stars to a large and appreciative public. This wider work stands as one of the most significant contributions to the advancement of scientific literacy in our time. It is especially for this that we honor you today. The titles of your astonishing array of books convey both the range and the joyful spirit with which you take us along on your forays into the cosmos. Merlin's Tour of the Universe, 1989. Universe Down, of Earth, Down to Earth, 1994. Just visiting this planet, 1998. The Sky is Not the Limit, Adventures of an Urban Astrophysicist, 2000. One Universe, 2000. Origins, 14 Billion Years of Cosmic Evolution, the companion book to the PBS Nova series that premiered in 2004. Death by Black Hole and Other Cosmic Quandaries, 2007. And The Pluto Files, The Rise and Fall of America's Favorite Planet, 2009. <laughs> With its delightful editorial cartoons, notes from school children, an immensely readable account of your experience at the center of the controversy over Pluto's status as a planet. Just this year, you published Space Chronicles, Facing the Ultimate Frontier, on the future of space travel and Americans' role in that future. You are now shooting a remake of Carl Sagan's landmark Cosmos series, <laughs> aired to air in 2013. You have received NASA's Distinguished Public Service Medal, the highest civilian honor awarded by that organization. You hold over a dozen honorary degrees, including the one awarded yesterday, but not yet counting the one that I'm holding <laughs> right here. <laughs> and you have been named one of Harvard's 100 most influential alumni. one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. And by who other than People Magazine, Sexiest Astrophysicist Alive. More importantly, <laughs> and certainly more permanently, <laughs> <laughs> the International Astronomical Union officially named an asteroid after you, 13123 Tyson. <laughs> Above all, you teach. You are equally at home talking to fellow scientists, challenging school kids into that aha moment they will never forget, and reminding Jon Stewart that the Earth on his show is spinning in the wrong direction. <laughs> You speak, as you said in the dedication to your book, Origins, quote, to all those who look up and to all those who don't yet know why they should. For showing us the wonders above, Mount Holyoke is proud to bestow upon you the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa.
I need to uh, first clarify a couple of things about that intro. Uh, first of all, that People Magazine distinction, that was 12 years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a 12 year ago thing. Uh, that asteroid is real and it's not headed towards Earth, the one that has my name on it. Um, but also in that People Magazine distinction, just consider the category first. Before you, it's hard to get big headed over being the sexiest astrophysicist. I, I, I don't know who I beat out for that. You know, but Stephen Hawking or I don't know. I don't know who, who's runner up. I'm just saying, I don't know. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. All right. Uh, I'm not unmindful that I am in the shade and you are not. So, uh, consider, so we'll keep this short, plus you have a commencement speaker to follow, a real commencement speaker. Uh, I, you should know, I think, that black cloth absorbs 98% of all incident sunlight upon it, which makes graduation robes good for cold, dank, British boarding schools and bad for outdoor graduations. I just want to tell you that. I, I, that's a tweet right there, isn't that? Isn't that? I feel compelled to textify. Black cloth. Graduation robes, good for cold, dank British prep school. Bad for outdoor graduations. Okay, here we go. Uh, I just want to make this quick, because um, I'm tired. And I'm, I'm, I tell you, I'm tired of trying to fix the world. I'm tired. I, I need the rest of you to help me fix the world. The world is getting stupider. starts getting stupid. So, so yes, even on Jon Stewart, the opening credits, rotating globe, is turning the wrong direction. I told him this. And in, in tall buildings, you realize 80% of them don't have a 13th floor? We're, this is the 21st century America. There are people afraid of the number 13. I need help. Okay? I need help when a member of Congress said, I have changed my views 360 degrees on that issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> I need help when I see newspaper headlines lamenting the state of the school system and they complain half the schools are below average. <laughs> drive on a parkway and park on a driveway. What, what's that about? What? And, and why do people think the world is going to end this year? Right? They study the Mayan calendar and they believe the Mayans somehow knew more about astrophysics than I do. Okay? So, so, so what they didn't tell you is that the Mayans somehow actually, in their ability to predict the future, didn't see the end of their own civilization coming, all right? So, and then the people who like, don't like high tech or space, and they, well, you're having this conversation with them, oh wait a minute, I have a call on my cell phone to get the GPS coordinates of where the, count, where the where that satellite photo is gonna be so we can hold a party when it's not raining, right? These are the people who don't like technology, right? Who are these people? And why, why do they even exist with that going on in their mind? You have to fix these people, okay? Because you know what you need? What we need here, because I, I want to make the world smart again, and I need, I need you to be part of the community of people who help make this happen, because only then can you invent the future, right? You don't discover a pre-existing future, you create the future. And I want you to create the future. 
that you would be proud to bequeath and honored to inherit. Thank you all.